What's going on everybody? My name is Nick Juretic and today I'm going to be going over all the gear that I used for my through hike of the PCT in 2022. I'm very happy to start making this video. About two months out from the PCT, I made a lot of switches to my gear. I realized that what I had was probably not going to work for the mileage and the things that I was planning on doing and the goals that I wanted to achieve. So I decided to switch a lot of things up and I'm happy that now I'll be able to go through that with you guys and let you know exactly what worked, what didn't work, and all the things that I learned about my gear on my through hike of the PCT. I will also have a list for all the gear that I go over in the description section of this video. So I first wanted to go over the backpack that I used. I decided to go with the Z-Pax Nero. It's a 38 liter bag. It was probably about the lightest bag that I could find. I think overall it is about 12 ounces with the shoulder strap that I use for the water bottle pouch here. Overall, the bag did everything that I needed to. Um, it held up. The back part was one of my favorite parts of the whole bag. I could stuff so many things into this back part that ended up helping me out a lot, especially on some of the longer carries where I had, you know, six up to seven days of food. This really helped me kind of like pack as much things as I could or move some things that were inside my bag to the outside so that I could store more food. Yeah, this ended up being a real lifesaver for me. There were only a couple things that kind of uh, broke with the bag. Main thing was this water bottle pouch. Uh, they have these little metal straps here that kind of hook into the shoulder strap. Both of the top and the bottom broke off pretty quickly. So I ended up kind of just using that elastic part and tying it to the um, shoulder strap here on the top and the bottom and it worked okay it was kind of a annoying i had to do redo it a couple times but over the end of the day it, it it did hold up and it's still on here also the chest strap that straps through the chest broke off the end of the strap that locked in the little um click mechanism here uh broke off the threading came out and it broke off so i ended up having to use a piece of guy line and just basically tie the guy line to the shoulder strap and then i you know hooked this little um clip component through it and that way I could still strap both sides and I was still able to tighten or adjust from this side here and loosen so it it worked but that was kind of annoying that that chest strap fell off because I desperately needed the chest strap the chest strap was super important to to keeping the weight where I needed it to and adjusting throughout my days and the book bag did tear in one spot here on the back I think it was just from hiking and that part rubbing is my back literally all day long that it kind of thinned out and ripped right through the middle but i did have a waterproof liner this um nylofume pack liner just super light it just kind of stuffed this into my pack first put like all my sleeping bag clothes all that important stuff that i didn't want to get wet i put it in there stuffed these into my bag so i didn't run into any issues and overall this bag worked out great it was definitely hard on the shoulders especially with the uh, waist strap being so small the waist belt was literally just these two pieces of strap here no padding or anything so it did little to kind of take weight off the shoulders so it was kind of brutal on the shoulders but um overall a great bag and um it was light so it did its job next i'm gonna go over my shelter so for my tent or for my shelter i used a hyperlight mountain gear um tarp i think it was their eight and a half foot by eight and a half foot square tarp um, just had some guy lines that I attached to it. I used the Kelty Triptees light line as for my guy lines here that I just attached to the tarp. Of course, I had my tent st stakes. I kept my tent stakes in a little uh, z packs tent state bag. Just helped keep them all together and I made sure kind of didn't poke too much of anything. I used the MSR Mini Groundhog. Um, I felt like these were extremely durable. I was able to beat on the top of them when I need to to get into the, the hard dirt and sand, especially through the desert and the ends did really well at kind of withholding all the punishment and being smashed into the ground um so they definitely did their job for my ground sheet i used this thin lightweight ground sheet it was definitely not the most durable but it did hold up pretty well um there was a couple times that i had a couple slits through and i was able to use duct tape and kind of just tape where the holes were and it actually lasted pretty well and then i also took just some extra guy line just in case anything happened or i needed anything extra or to kind of repair or hold anything so i just brought this with me just in case so for my sleep system i used this thin little foam pad i cut it just to the length of my torso and just kind of folded it up and i was able to kind of stick it into the back of my 
um, backpack so it kind of added a little bit of stability to the backpack but this was pretty much all I used it it was a little bit insulated so um, I laid this foam part down slept on this side here and it kind of kept the um, cold ground from kind of reaching me and then for my sleeping bag I used an enlightened equipment um, down quilt so this is a 30 degree down quilt yeah it worked great for me I, I enjoyed the quilt I could kind of like bundle up if I'm needed to or I could kind of lay it out especially um, at parts of the desert where the night was much warmer I didn't I sometimes just slept on top of it and was able to lay it out a little bit so I did really like this it also had these clips so a couple nights um, when I was kind of up at the high altitude in the um, Sierra Mountains I was able to kind of clip this here bundle up and like really just kind of use this little cinch and just bury my head into here and almost like kind of get into a little bit of, co of a cocoon and it did a really good job at keeping me warm especially on a couple of those cold nights where it did drop below freezing while I was up in the Sierra Mountains. For my kitchen setup um, I mainly just cold soaked my food I didn't bring any um, anything to cook food at all so while I was hiking I had uh, no hot food I mainly just used cold soaking for um, breakfast I did an oat mix and then for dinner I did some type of like rice or beans mix and I would always cold soak that. So that really kept my kitchen equipment pretty light. I used a Talenti jar, a Talenti ice cream jar as my cold soak jar. I don't have one. The one I used, I threw it away when I finished the hike. My utensil was, I bought this plastic set with a fork, a knife, and a spoon. I only took the spoon, so I, I of course didn't use these on the hike. I just used a spoon, but I also threw the spoon away after the hike, so I don't have that either. For my water filter, I used a Sawyer Squeeze. Um, I did bring this little plunger with me. I was sometimes worried that, you know, whether this would get dirty. I just wanted to have something to clean it if I needed. So I did bring the little plunger. I did not use the uh, Sawyer Squeeze water bags. I used a Knock 2 liter um, water bag. That one was like, I think like a kind of like a silicone material. And it was just much more durable um, than this is what I thought. It ended up breaking on me probably about two weeks before the end of the hike. So it did last a long time. And then right after my um, water bag broke with a knock, I just used the Sawyer squeeze with, with just a smart water bottle and it was squeezing the smart water bottle through the um, Sawyer and that worked as well once my knock bag kind of gave up um, about the last two weeks of the hike. For my food, I kept everything in this um, z -Pax. I think this is the large food bag. So I um, used the z -Pax food bag and just kept, I packed each day. I had a big Ziploc bag, had a full day's worth of food in every single Ziploc bag. So I put all, you know, four to six days worth of food into this bag. And each day I could take out my one Ziploc bag that I was eating out of, put that right at the top in my pack. And that way it was easy to kind of get to when I made my stops. And then I also brought these two, uh, light load towels that I bought from z -Packs. So they're super light towel. You could kind of wring them out. They would dry. So they're really good for like multi-use and they lasted pretty well. Um, so I've usually had two and I think I picked up some more um, with a couple of my packages as well, just so I could have some new towels. For my clothing, I basically had a set of hiking clothes and then a set of sleeping clothes. So for my hiking clothes, I carried with me one hiking shirt, I got these, these are Bimini Bay. I actually got these at Walmart. They were really cheap. They worked very good. Um, basically the exact same thing as some of the other Columbia $60, $70 shirts that I was looking at. This one was like, I think 20 bucks at Walmart. So, and it worked great for me. For my shorts, I just used a pair of like regular lightweight gym shorts. I think I got these at like a Ross or like a TJ Maxx. Um, they were like 10 bucks. Just a nice super lightweight short, nothing special. For my underwear, I used um, these kind of long, long leg uh, compression underwear. These were awesome. It really helped so much with chafing. The longer the better for me with chafing. Anywhere that my shorts hung over my underwear, I would seem to kind of get chafing there. So Having these longer than my shorts was, was a big game changer for me and really helped. And I kept two pair of underwear with me always. So that way um, I wasn't having to use the same underwear all the time. I could like use it for half and then I could use another pair for half. And then I'd usually get to a place where I could clean up and then kind of start that process over again. For my socks, I basically used um, a pair of the Injinji toe socks, the little ankle socks. These work great. And then just the darn tough socks. All of my darn tough socks ended up getting a hole right 
inside right above the ankle. Yeah, so I basically had two nice holes on each side of these socks and a holes in the middle. The socks for me really didn't stand a chance. Um, I think I went through six pair total through the hike and all of them basically had giant holes of them within about a week. So, um, but besides that, they did withstand after they got the holes in them. They did last for the rest of the, the time I used them. So that was really good. For my sleep clothes, um, I basically just had a pair of nice sweatpants. These are warm, they're kind of loose sweatpants. So I had one pair of those. I had a pair of just kind of loose boxers that helped me kind of like, especially when I was hot at the end of the day, these felt really good to put on and kind of air out a little bit. I kept one long sleeve shirt with me. Um, I wasn't sure how the weather was be. I figured a long sleeve shirt just to cover up either way and it worked really good. I was very happy to have a long sleeve shirt in a lot of situations and also had just a pair of wool socks. So I did keep all of these with me and I basically put these all in this one little Z-Packs. I think it's a medium bag. I'd fit all of these into this medium bag, stuff that in my bag and each night I'd pull that out, change into these bed clothes and it was like, it felt really good honestly. I was very, I was always happy to put on these clothes at the end of the day, get out of the hiking clothes and get into some fresh clothes before I went to sleep. For my weather gear, for my jacket, I use an Alighton Equipment Torrid Apex. This is a synthetic jacket. I figured if it rained or anything, I'd want to have a synthetic jacket so that I could still stay warm even if it got a little bit of wet. Um, the jacket did really well. There was a couple parts where it ripped and I um, put some black duct tape kind of and some other duct tape that I had kind of on the spots where the jacket was ripping just to kind of hold it together. I think there was like three spots, a big slit here um a little one here and then one right on the on the cuff of the arm so i just put some tape on them and it held up pretty good and i'm still actually using this so it's it's still working pretty well for my rain jacket i also used um an alighting equipment rain jacket they're visp even though i didn't really encounter rain there was one time when i was leaving acton campground i left super early and I was still in the desert hadn't seen a drop of rain yet and right when i left that very morning as soon as the sun came up this giant thunderstorm rolled in and i got stuck on the side of a mountain early in the morning i had to lay down i just basically got poured on almost got struck by lightning it was a pretty uh fast and wild situation it kind of came in real fast a bunch of loud booms just dumped rain and then it was gone hiking and basically didn't see any rain until the day I crossed the Oregon border and then basically I think every all the days in Oregon I got a little bit of rain throughout the day but overall didn't encounter much rain but when I did this jacket was awesome I used these enlightened equipment um, copper filled wind pants so these kept me warm when it was cold uh, where parts of there was a lot of mosquitoes this was a lifesaver for my legs that kept mosquitoes away from my legs even though it did get really hot hiking in this when there was mosquitoes um, so that was kind of a pain when the mosquitoes came and they were biting my legs I essentially had to had to put these on whether or not it was hot or cold so that was kind of tough but um, I was really happy to have these they worked well no rips no anything um, they held up very well and I couldn't be happier with these for my hat I actually started off out with an outdoor research sun hat and lost it um, I went to the miner's diner right whenever I got into Julian. I just wanted to kind of sit in a cool place. I wanted to get something to drink and just kind of let my stomach settle right when I got in because I was I was really hurting then. Um, and before I left the miner's diner, I actually left my hat on the back of one of the chairs and basically forgot, completely forgot about it, never went back and got it. So when I went into Idlewild, I bought this hat and it stayed with me the rest of the hike um, while I was in on my five day recovery hiatus. I went and bought this hat. I kind of, um, I poked some holes and put this guy line through so I could hang it around my neck, kind of popped it right through the top. It kind of cinches up at the back so I was able to get it tight around my, around the top of my head. It was stood some pretty high wind. So um, yeah, this hat, I definitely remember. I also brought a toboggan. I brought the one from uh, the gym that I work at, uh, the Next Element Academy. So this is the boxing and jujitsu academy that I coach at and just wore our toboggan. And then for my fanny pack, I use this z Packs fanny pack. Um, I think I got like the the DCF um, fabric on it. So it was like supposed to be like uh, more resistant, uh, more rip proof and waterproof and all that. This bag did amazing. It did everything I needed to do. It did break on several occasions, uh, 
both of the straps where the bag hooked in kind of broke. So I had to tie them with guy line and tape certain things. I ended up having to feed a guy line through this back part here, tie up both sides so that I could keep this enough together to still use the backpack. So by the end of the trip, it definitely was beat up, but, um, and the zipper of course stopped working. Um, but it was, I was able to kind of get it to hold up pretty well, um, at the front. So nothing ever really felt fell out even after the zipper broke. Uh, I was happy with the bag overall, even though I did have to do some, you know, managing to get it to, to make it through the entire hike. And for my Diddy bag, I took with me a mosquito head net that really came into handy, especially some of those parts um, right on like the Oregon border and into Oregon where I ran into a lot of mosquitoes. This thing was a lifesaver. I kept some chafing cream. I used the squirrels, nut butter, chafing cream. I had this trial with me, the deuce number two that I took with me, worked great. I had like my little medical bag, it was just a safety pin, a couple strips of Luco tape and just some antibiotic cream. And I basically kind of stocked up on these and just kept these with me in case I had any blisters or cuts or sores or needed the tape for anything. Also took this little Swiss Army knife. It's a very small, teeny little Swiss Army knife. This was pretty much the only uh, weapon that I had on me, if you call this a weapon but it had a toothpick, some tweezers, scissors, nail filer, everything like that. It was actually pretty useful and works really well. So it, was, it did come into handy. I had this Coast G22 flashlight. It was perfect. Um, great little flashlight, small, light, everything I needed. I had this chapstick and I put some duct tape around the chapstick and I just kept a bag with my PCT permits and any other paperwork or notes or um, information that I needed or wanted to have on me. Even though this wasn't in my Diddy bag, I did carry um, basically this little plastic bag that's acted as my wallet. I kept it inside my fanny pack and just basically had my ID, any cash, and then credit debit cards and stuff that I kept in this little bag. For my electronics, um, I did take a pair of headphones. Again, I think I lost those on like the first week. So I went the rest of the hike with zero headphones. I used the Garmin InReach Mini as my um, satellite phone and this was really great my wife and mother really loved this i was um able to track my entire hike they could go on and see where i was at any time because i pretty much had this on um, all day i could send the messages even when i didn't have service when i got to my campsite i had these preloaded messages so it made it super easy i could cut it on do a couple clicks send them both the message make sure it's sent out and just go to sleep and they knew that i was safe or if they needed to at any point of the day, they could kind of go online, go to the Garmin website and see exactly where I was at, make sure I was still moving and all those things. So this was really nice. And for my family, you know, it was definitely a great thing to have. I carried, of course, my iPhone with me. Just, I'm not even sure what version this is, but just regular iPhone. That's where I took all my pictures, everything. This is the only camera or anything I took with me. I took this Coast headlamp. This does run off batteries, but it worked really good. I basically in my resupply package just kind of put a couple batteries in there, switch these when, when needed. And this was great. It has kind of three different levels of brightness. I did use these um, two Nightcore MB 10,000 um, basically power banks. If I make any stops for resupply, I'd get these both of these charged up as quick as possible. I had this um, this kind of quick charging cable with this uh, quick charging plug. You know, I just got kind of the best ones that I could that I thought would be the fastest and uh, basically use these. I would charge the two power banks up right whenever I got to resupply, get those things charged first, and then whatever left, I would charge my phone or the um, Garmin in reach when I had the chance to. And both the Garmin and my phone ran off two different cords. So I had a, a charging cord for the Garmin and then a, of course just regular um, charging cord for my iPhone. And last but not least, I did carry bear spray with me. Um, going to the hike, I was kind of concerned with as much night hiking as I was planning on doing that um, I just wanted to have some type of bear spray that if I did run into a mountain lion, which was kind of my, my biggest concern, that uh, I would be able to at least use that as a defense to, to keep them away. And yeah, I just was not interested in seeing any mountain lions or running into them. So I just wanted to have at least one thing that that I could use in kind of a last dit ditch effort besides just getting tall. So, and that is everything that I used. Sometimes it was a challenge, but I was actually able to fit everything into um, the z packs Nero 38 liter bag pretty, pretty easy. The only issues that I had was through that portion of um, the Sierra Mountains where you had to carry a bear can. I did rent a bear can from the outfitters at Kennedy Meadows South and then 
you know, took it with me and ended up dropping off at Kennedy Meadows North. I did just decide to rent the bear can. I just figured overall it'd be an easier situation and um, it turned out to be good. It was a challenge fitting into the bag and especially that first day off from Kennedy Meadows South where I had seven days worth of food, new bear canister, all that stuff. It was, I had a 40 pound book, a 40 pound pack when I left that morning in that z Pax Nero and it was, it was heavy that first day, but I still was able to do 40 miles actually my first day out of um, Kennedy Meadows South with a 40 pound book bag. So I was um, pretty happy that day. I remember thinking, damn, I did. 40 miles with 40 pounds starting um, and was kind of you know happy with that. I think with all my equipment, my base weight was just over eight pounds. My bag usually fluctuated probably somewhere around 25 to 30 pounds um, on average and uh, especially with the water carries and, and plenty of days worth of food. So, and overall that weight seemed to be really good for me. Um, my body got accustomed to everything after I got through those few injuries at the beginning. Um, I kind of hit the ground running and was able to kind of put in big mile days pretty um, regularly for basically the remainder of the two months I was out there. And I hope this kind of helps you guys or gives you ideas or tips or um, any information as you gear up for your um, PCT hike for 2023 and beyond. If you have any questions or um, want any further information, please just leave it in the comments. I will um, look at them and get back to them as quick as possible so I can help you guys as much as possible. And again, I'm gonna list kind of all the equipment that I went over in the description um, for this video and as well as probably a um, link to my lighter pack and um, page and all that stuff so that hopefully I can give you guys as much information as you can. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and of course subscribe to keep um, following along. I want to keep posting videos around all the things that I find interesting. I'm going to do um, maybe some running videos, some art videos coming up here along the graffiti and stuff that I do. Uh, so I'm hoping just to kind of post a bunch of things about my life that I find interesting, a lot of the hobbies and things that I'm really into, and hopefully you guys find those interesting too. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you and have a great day.